Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we will really deep dive the functionalities and the characteristics of the ME90, also answering some questions that I have received in the comment section of my ME90 video review. For instance, we will check out how the ME90 compares versus the GX100 in terms of amp sound simulation, how to verify the value of a specific parameter when you change preset, how many USB channels we have at our disposal when recording, etc. And here I want to really thank you all of you for all the comments, suggestions and messages of appreciation that I have received in my video review. Really, I can't say thank you enough and with this video I hope to be able to provide you with interesting answers for all your questions. Let's start. First question. How many USB channels does the unit offer? Can I record at the same time the dry signal of the guitar and the effects coming from the ME90? Well, the ME90 offers four USB channels. For instance, in the video you can verify how my Mac Studio sees the ME90. As you can notice, we have four channels at 24 bits and up to 96 kilohertz. The first two channels contain the signal with all the effects that you have activated in the chain, where the channels 3 and 4 contain the DI signal of your guitar that you can use for reamping purposes. This is pretty cool as in this price range Typically, the other units offer only two USB channels, allowing us to record only the sounds of our pedal board with the effects included. But if you want to reamp later, the ME90 can help you, offering the possibility to record at the same time the DI signal of your guitar in one specific track of your DO and the stereo signal with all the effects included in other two tracks. Pretty cool. Second question. Can I change the order of the effects in the signal chain? Well, here the answer is yes and no. In fact, you don't have total freedom in changing the effect blocks order, but the ME90 changes it for you. For instance, let's say that you have the effect 2 associated to a chorus. As you may notice here in the signal chain, it is located after the amp. But if I change the effect and I select a booster, boom, it is located right before the amp, as the booster should stay before the amp. Therefore, basically, the ME90 changes the effect block order autonomously to provide to the user with the best signal chain possible, without the guitarist having to care about this aspect. Of course, this could be pretty cool for some of you, where it could be a limitation for someone else. Personally, I'm fine, as I typically don't use complex signal chains. But of course, if you are someone who wants to experiment with complex and unusual signal chains, it could be a limitation. For sure, it is a very good approach for someone who is not an expert and just want to play without having to care about the signal chain. Question number three. How long does it take to change preset? Does it have gap when switching presets? Here I have good news, as basically the unit is gapless. This is a test switching from two different presets. As you may have noticed, there is no gap while switching the presets. Question number four. Where does the effect loop is positioned in the signal chain? The effect loop is before the amp or after the amp, and you can define the location, for instance, using the app, going into the system menu, then in the send and return setting submenu, where you can choose to place the send return before 
or after the amp block, as shown in the video. Nice and easy. Question number five. How can I check out the value associated to one specific knob, especially when changing presets? This is a very cool question. And there has been a lot of debate in the comment section of my video review of this unit about this topic. In fact, the knobs are not motorized. Therefore, when you change preset, basically you don't know where the knobs were located according to the preset. And if you want to make a little change, for instance to the gain, well, the risk is that you have to set it up from scratch. But there is a solution. If you hold the exit and edit at the same time, and then you turn whatever knob you want, the display will actually show the value of the knob itself. This is super useful in my opinion, and I want really to thank all of you, as without your suggestions I would not have been able to find this nice and elegant solution. Question number six. Do the amp simulation sounds the same as the GX100? This is an interesting question, and in order to answer I have done some tests that I want to share with you. I have recorded some test leaks in my digital audio workstation that then I have reamped, sending them to the M90, the GX100 and a real plexi. For all the units I have used the same IR, which is an IR of a greenback speaker. With these leaks we will check out the gain level, the frequency response and the dynamic range management of the units against the real plexi. Let's hear some sound tests.
okay, they sound very close, even if not exactly equally. I have noticed a little difference in the gain levels. I mean, the ME90 seems to be a little bit more gainy compared to the GX100, where in terms of dynamic range management, I mean how they react to your touch, how they clean up and break up according to how strong or soft you play, well, I didn't notice any difference. So in terms of amp simulation, these units basically are on the same level. Of course, with the GX100 you have more parameters that you can tweak and therefore you can customize more your tone. But at the basic settings, they sound almost indistinguishable. Question 7. Is it possible to send one output to a PA with the cab sim on and another with the cab sim off to the input of a guitar amp? First of all, the speaker simulator is placed at the very end of the effect chain. You can find it under output in the editor and it is applied only to the output LR jacks when the back panel switch is in line position. Therefore, a solution could be flip the back panel switch to line position and send a signal from output left and right to a PA. Then use the send jack to send the signal without speaker modeling to an amp. By the way, you can decide if you want to place the loop jack before or after the preamp section of the ME90. I mean, placing the loop in the post position, the modulation and the time-based effects will be still placed after your loop, which means these effects won't reach to your guitar amp. So, pretty interesting. I didn't think it was possible, but actually it is. Question 8. What happens when the unit is switched off? Is it through bypass? The unit will always run through a form of ADA conversion and buffer. And in fact, there is no hardwired through bypass. Nonetheless, as you know, the latency is super low at less than one millisecond. And there is a quality buffer inside the unit. Therefore, I don't think there is any effect to a player tone when everything is switched off. At least this is my experience. Question 9. Can I use the unit with the four cable method with my tube amp? Officially Boss does not say anything related to this and there is no mention anywhere in the manual or online. I mean whether we can apply the 4CM with the ME90 or not. Officially the effect send and return is for external pedals only. Nonetheless, we can do it, even if there is not a ground lift switch in the unit in order to eliminate ground noise in certain situations when using the unit with the amp with the four cable method. However, it does not mean we cannot use the ME90 with a four cable method. In this case, you can use the switch on the back panel in guitar amp position and then you have to select the most appropriate setting in the output select section of the editor based on what type of amp you are using. But make sure it is in return mode as we are gonna connect the ME90 output to the return jack of the amp. Okay, that's all and I hope this video has been of some help. Thank you once more for all your comments and support. Your amazing feedbacks and reaction to my video review of the ME90 really mean a lot to me and push me forward to make the best I can. See you soon. Bye.